This video will discuss energy functions in computational chemistry. So in the most general sense, an energy function is just some mathematical algorithm that inputs the state of a system and outputs the energy. So we have some set of specifications which indicates the current state of whatever system we're looking at, whether that's an atom, a molecule, an electron, a an entire nanotube, um, whatever our system is, we have some set of data that indicates its state. Then we input that state to the energy function, and the energy function tells us what the energy of our system is in that state. Okay, so that's all very abstract and uh, doesn't include a whole lot of concrete information. So what can we include in the state? So the kind of data or information in the state you might include coordinates, things like XYZ coordinates of molecules, coordinates of various other structural elements of interest, maybe a boundary to the system, uh, maybe some, some other kind of uh, coordinate of interest. You might include the bonded structure, things like specifying which atoms are bonded to which, what bond angles I have, what torsion angles, out of plane angles, um, if there's any kind of other extra um, bonded elements in the structure. Any kind of external elements I mentioned as, you know, you might want to include a boundary. Maybe you want to include a, a surface that repels things. Maybe you want to tether some atom to some location. Any kind of external element could be included in your state. Um, various empirical parameters, as we'll discuss extensively in this chapter. Maybe there's some kind of value which you specify, which uh, determines some factor about how the energy works. Or maybe you have more uh, physical properties like the electric charge of the system or the spin of the electrons, as is going to be used in uh, a lot of our advanced quantum mechanical type methods. Okay, and then as far as the energy, what it does with all of this information, what does the what can the energy function include? So it might include just, you know, basic logic statements. It might say, you know, if this is bonded, then that does this to the energy. If this is outside of the boundary, it does that. So it might just include some type of logic or control statements. It might just be regular old arithmetic. It might be, you know, the energy equals this x coordinate. The energy equals this y coordinate squared plus one. Uh, there might be some type of algebra to solve. You might get some type of algebraic equation. You might get some type of calculus equation to solve that you need some uh, some computational routine to to assist you with. Or maybe it's um, some more advanced numerical procedure. Maybe it's something that you have to uh, implement some custom uh, computer program to solve, or maybe it's something that can easily be done with pen and paper. All those things are possible. So putting that all together, we can have energy functions which are either very simple or ones which are very complex. So we can have simple ones which are you know just a, a few logic statements, or we can have things as complex as what we'll eventually uh, study in in computational chemistry as full configuration interaction, which is essentially uh, the exact solution to the Schrodinger equation. We could have analytic an exact solution or a numerical approximate solution. So maybe our equations are too difficult to, to solve exactly. Maybe we need to make some type of clever approximation to be able to solve them or to be able to make our computer program run quickly. They could be based in quantum mechanics, the general laws of physics of very small objects. They could be in molecular mechanics, a more approximate type of methodology, which we'll discuss mostly in this chapter. Or they might be something completely different. Might be something systematic, might be something ad hoc that you've just uh, cooked up yourself. They could be what you call ab initio, based off of first principles physics, or they could be empirical where you uh, just basically try to refine parameters to uh, reproduce the, out the output of some type of experimental result. They could be atomistic, where you model every single atom. You could model every single electron, or that might be too much information. You might want to do a, a more coarse-grained model, where maybe you do, instead of every atom, every 
uh, amino acid residue, maybe every uh, nucleic acid base, maybe every 10 bases are, are a single particle when you're doing things that are more coarse grained. All of these are possible. All of them fall under the umbrella of energy functions, which just takes as an input some definition for our state and then returns the energy from whatever kind of function it defines.